Welcome to this new podcast, which is part of Croda's Beyond the Horizon series of content, where we explore some of the most exciting innovation taking place within Croda. Today, we're going to look at how to establish the total environmental impact of a product across its life cycle, something that's challenged companies across many industries for decades. Croda has actually developed a way to do this, a life cycle assessment tool that can be adapted to a range of scenarios. We brought together some experts from Croda to explain why LCA is so important, how to do a life cycle analysis, and how the tool works. I'll now introduce them. We have Antonia Doncilla, Group Sustainability Specialist, Julia Creasy, Group Sustainability Director, Sarah Davidson, Technology Development Lead, Sridhar Angela, Group Sustainability Specialist, and Rebecca Wood, Life Sciences Sustainability Manager. So we'll now kick off the questions. So firstly, addressed to Julia, could you please explain simply to us what LCA is, why it's become important to Croda over the past few years, and what it means for the business now and going forward into the future? Uh, hi, Jack. Yes, uh, I can. So, um, yeah, we started looking at life cycle assessment probably six or seven years ago now, perhaps longer, um, when we realised that we needed to understand you know, the environmental impacts of our ingredients throughout their life cycle. So at Croda, we're supplying ingredients that are then used by our customers to develop vinyl formulations and end products that are used either by consumers or in, um, you know, or in other applications into, into farmer ingredients or into crop protection ingredients, uh, for example. Um, and so for us, you know, we, it's, we need to understand Firstly, the ingredients that we're sourcing and, you know, our operations, what those impacts are so that we can think about our innovation um, and think about how to design the next generation of ingredients that will be more sustainable. But it was also really important that we understood what was happening to our ingredients downstream of us and how the way that our customers and, and consumers used our ingredients would impact the environment as well. Um, and so for us, uh, you know, it's been a really useful technique. We have. Um, We've developed our own tool, bespoke tool that we've uh, that allows us to do these models and, and do these studies in house. And um, we're finding now, you know, we've got it's great. We've got Becky on this call today because we're finding that we're getting a lot of pull from the businesses because our customers are really valuing getting this, getting hold of this data and being able to to understand what you know sourcing from Croda means in terms of environmental impacts, and also, you know with Sarah on the call, it's really helping to inform our innovation as well. So, um, so there's kind of multiple outputs and, and uses for this data. Yeah. Sarah, uh, is there anything you'd like to say, say about that? You sound like you uh, have some expertise in this particular area. Yeah, just to reiterate what Julia said around the way that LCA can inform innovation, um, that's something we do see as a really important part of delivering those sustainable solutions as part of our commitment. Um, so there's examples where we have run an LCA on a product and been able to look at the hotspots in terms of its impact across its life cycle. Um, so understanding um, what the raw material impacts are um, it is something that we've done a lot of uh, different analysis on. So um, being able to choose actually which raw materials to go into our new products, which will deliver the most beneficial um, environmental impact is something that we have been doing now um, more than ever um, as a result of using the LCAs. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll just add on to that. Sorry, around, um, you know, Julia mentioned that kind of position that we have around needing to understand our upstream as well as the, the downstream. And I think, you know, for Croda, we, we're quite uniquely placed in the supply chain at being able to, to look both ways and, and help inform the supply chain around where the environmental impacts are coming from. What's the materiality of not just Croda's ingredients, but how our customers are using them or, or where our suppliers are, are sourcing their raw materials from. Um, and I think it's that end-to-end -end visibility that LCA gives us that that means we're we're certain when we're looking at the data and we're communicating with with customers and suppliers that we're not simply just asking them to move the environmental burden somewhere else in the supply chain, that we're actually asking you know, to take actions. We want to take actions and we want our supply chain to take actions that's actually going to have a, a positive impact overall. Yeah. 
And Antonia, I know uh, you've been at the sharp end of this work. Um, what makes it so exciting from your perspective? I think it's, you know, after a really long time when we were trying to think of, of the right things to do, the right goals to set. Now it's finally, we have this tool which enables us to take the right actions and prioritize these actions in an order that benefits um, Croda and our customers and the society overall. Because um, as we knew before, and we've discovered even more through these LCA studies, there's lots of um, competing um, if you want impact on the environment, so achieving a low carbon product, that, that does not mean you can also achieve a low toxicity or low uh, water product or a low land use product. Um, so it really helps us see everything in one big picture and really make informed decisions because going forward we don't have much room for mistake we're, we have very ambitious targets over a very short time frame um, and right now we know exactly where to focus our our um, efforts for for the maximized benefit of, of an investment yeah yeah makes sense so let's move on to the next question then. Um, how exactly did Croda build the tool? Um, like what, what makes it so effective and what challenges had to be overcome in the process? And I'm going to direct you initially, uh, direct that question to you, Antonia. Um, yes, well, as Julia said, we started thinking about life cycle assessment a, a long time ago, but realistically it wasn't, it wasn't until um, two, three years ago when we um, actually developed um, some technical expertise around LCA uh, internally in CRODA. So we've uh, worked with a third party, with LCA experts from Ricardo, who really um, were uh, attuned to all the best practice, all the right standards, all the right methodologies and approaches uh, in the world of LCA. Um, and we've worked together to kind of translate CRODA's needs into a tool that in essence does the same thing that all the um, LCA softwares like SEMA Pro or Gabi do, um, but uh, in practice it's a lot, um, it drives a lot more value for Croda because First of all, we own it, and therefore, you know, we can adapt it to our needs. But um, also, it it kind of enables us to to test future scenarios and um, test alternatives that we think would be better um, for for the environment. And then we can actually see if, if our hypothesis is correct or not. Um, so it's really tailored for for Crota's needs, and and we work with some really great people to to build this tool. And then the next step was obviously knowing how to properly use this tool. Um, in all the different um, life cycle assessment studies that we've done, because we have such various products and such different um, processes that really one size does not fit all. Doing one LCA does not mean you now know how to do all of the LCA. So we had yeah, to yeah. cover quite a lot of um, variety. And um, but what makes the tool so effective is that it, it, it can it can do everything we we need it to do because it's so versatile. It's modular. It's um, it's easy to use once you get the hang of it um so yeah there was some 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 kind of a bit of a steep learning curve to do which was a, a bit of a challenge but definitely a, a massive opportunity in the end um and ultimately something that i think we're all on this table really proud to have overcome is um the initial maybe resistance or um, fear of, of everyone across the building when they interacted with such a complex study and having to get that buy-in from the different um, teams and functions in CRODA and have them realize that actually we're doing this because it drives business value. And yes, it may look complicated. It may require a lot of data. It may require some time on everyone's uh, part, but this is something that is will generate a, a concrete um, improvement in the ways of working and getting people on board. You know, it was a bit of a chicken and egg. Initially, we, we needed to have a couple of examples to get people on board, but then, you know, getting the initial um, stakeholders, having enough um, data and proof to show them there's value in this. It was it was difficult, but yeah. now we've definitely overcome this and we're at the stage where there is a lot of desire um, from, from the sectors to do more and more of these studies. So now we kind of have to uh, adjust the, the, the resource and the kind of technical capabilities to, to meet all yeah, these yeah. exciting um, new opportunities. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely jump in and, and add to that there, Antonio. I think I think 
you know, without having our own tool, which has been designed to to be ease of use. I think LCA for the business sectors b- before we'd had experience of it was either seen as something that was this complex software based that you needed an expert to read the data, understand the data, use the data, and it became really kind of, uh, you know, yeah, not very interactable to to those of us that are just kind of, you know, look, looking at how can we make our products better and, and how can we engage better with our customers. The, the other side of kind of LCA, when you saw these light touch LCA tools that existed as free to use, become so high level and use so much kind of proxy data that if you then sat with the business and said, oh, there's some information here on environmental footprints, they'd say, well, that's not relevant. That's not how we do it or that's not what our customers do with things. So we really needed to find something that was kind of in the middle, something that was accurate enough to feel reliable to make decisions on but not so complex and detailed that you know without a full degree in life cycle analysis you you didn't understand what what was happening and I think the tool's really been able to to, to do that and you know to Antonia's point of, of now actually the business is using the output you know we had examples that we're doing where we were able to model what if scenarios and make decisions to not do something before our researchers had even stepped in the lab to look at whether it was feasible. So actually, it's had quite a positive, you know, efficiency, resourcing saving for us in that it enables us to look at whether something's worth the time and effort and resourcing to, to undertake. Does it give us the environmental benefit that we're looking for before we've before we've, we've done it? And that's been so powerful. Yeah. Um, Sridhar, yeah. can I ask you a little bit about this since you know you're quite uh, quite the expert in this and I know you were involved in its development. Could you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, here, like whatever we discussed is what it is helping us. But the second part of this, we we uh, like force is building that capabilities, internal capabilities across Croda and having this uh, like not sitting one expert at one place and reaching out there, but building their capabilities across Croda and in different countries will help us to have that ease of uh, modeling and also like uh, uh, we, when we want to collect this data from different places instead of talking to one like uh, each individual stakeholder it will be very uh, uh, easy and good for us to communicate via tool which is modular so we can share it we can share it we can ask them to fill it we can have the data in detail uh, in detail level we want and it will be easy for us to build that internal capabilities and have this uh, widespread LCA networks under our uh, uh, center of excellence model. So this will be like uh, the bigger picture with having this easy tool and like flexible tool. OK, well, thank you for it's that. The, um, it's the sustainability Lego. The more bricks we build, the more we can create nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, models. <laughs> it's a good metaphor. OK, I'll move on to the, the next question then, very much related. Um, what are the best examples of LCA being put into practice uh, for Croda, uh, but also for you know for customers as well? And I wonder if Becky could take a stab at that one. Yeah, yeah. So I'd already alluded to where we've been using it for um, decision making around how we change raw materials or where we're looking to site manufacturing um, within within crop care. Um, but we've also been using it to, to kind of engage with customers um, around the, the, you know, if if we're wanting to make a change to our product because it has an environmental improvement, having good sound quality data that we can engage with customers on and help them understand why we're making changes and, and bring them on that journey with us, I think is it's probably where we started off thinking we'd be able to use LCA and we, and we certainly yeah. have. But what we've also seen is a, a pull from customers when they've started, when we started the conversation with them of, you know, how else can we use this data to, to work together? So can we, you know, look at formulate our customers' formulations using our knowledge of the environmental impacts of our products to help them design more sustainable formulations and um, and in some cases even trying to think can we completely redesign a system thinking about what would be the most sustainable formulation and work back then does that change the products that that customer 
purchases from customer you know rather than trying to improve a single product do we actually need to think about changing the the, the formulation and um you know we're at early stages i think with customers as on this um but certainly everything that we've shared with them so far they they've been really engaged um i think interesting as well some customers have also developed their own lca tools or are starting to develop their own lca tools and yeah. um you know we've been able to use this to bring together discussions around best practice and learnings from and how we can help each other and, and kind of really build that community of um, yeah, LCA development within Croda's supply chains. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Has anyone else got any uh, examples they, they might be able to share? That's yeah, maybe, I maybe I can uh, jump in as well. Um, so obviously I kind of deal more at the, the front end um, of the innovation um, process rather than at the back end when we're selling and dealing with customers. Um, but even at that point, LCA is very much coming in in terms of those collaborations. Um, so as part of our innovation network, we have lots of external partnerships um, with universities, with SMEs and with, with customers. Um, and I'm pretty sure that LCA forms a component of, of nearly all of those um, partnerships um, and external research projects that we have ongoing. So it just reinforces that message that LCA is, is that powerful tool that we need to use across the development of a new product or a new technology. Um, yeah. And we can have that engagement through the supply chain to help. Yeah, no, that makes sense. OK, um, so wouldn't you say that Croda's LCA approach is unusual compared to, uh, say, competitors? You know, is there is there a difference? Is there something that makes the approach um, stand out particularly? And I'm going to address that to you again, Sarah. I think so. So it's not um, unusual or different in the fact that, um, you know, we use different methodologies. We use the ISO standards that other customers um, and competitors will be using across the industry as well. So so it's very much what people would expect from LCA. But I think it's more in terms of the interdisciplinary approach that we've taken. Um, so as Stradar and, and Antonia mentioned, the way that the tool has been developed, it's got a number of modules um, that can be easily shared. Um, and and that really helps that collaboration from R&D to the people that manage the plants and processes through to um, the customer, um, the, the teams that interact with customers, sales and marketing. So we, we've got that input coming in, whereas I think uh, the other organisations, what we've seen is it's very much led um, by one LCA expert. The numbers are run and then off it goes. Um, yeah. So I think for me, that is one of the real assets um, for Croda in terms of how we've been approaching it. Yeah, yeah, getting everyone involved. Um, Antonio, uh, you, I think you may have something to say about that as well. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's it's exactly this interdisciplinarity that ultimately drives what what we want to achieve with LCA, which is to inform innovation. Um, and you know, Sarah can can do the best uh, description of of how we want to have predictive LCA footprinting as a tool for the very very early stages um, of innovation. But we couldn't achieve that, uh, you know, centrally with someone having loads of LCA knowledge but no knowledge about our processes, our chemistries uh, w w through an LCA tool, through an LCA approach, a center of excellence. We offer the right frameworks, but is ultimately how every Everyone in the business embraces these frameworks and uses them in a, a consistent and robust way that we achieve, you know, really next level informed, sustainable, innovative products. And I think that's where, in essence, is the differentiator is not the figures that we generate, is the, 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 the robustness of those figures and the way they're mm -hmm. used going forward in the next processes. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you tell us then how how the the LCA links with um, group sustainability sets sustainability's broader broader goals? I could imagine since you know group sustainability is basically very much involved with it. So there's a there's an overall plan here. Um, um, I, Julia can definitely give the the best picture, but the way I see it, and I'm not biased at all, uh, it LCA really sits at the center of. Um, all the different work streams that we're doing and all the different targets we want to achieve because it, it gives us the information we need to, to carry forward. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think if you, um, you know, a kind of a live example would be um, 
thinking about our emissions reductions, our science based targets. So obviously carbon is only one element of a life cycle assessment, but in generating this data and having a better understanding of the carbon footprint of our ingredients, that's really helping the business teams and, and Becky and, and her team understand um, across their portfolio of, of ingredients that they're selling to customers where those the higher impact or the lower impact ingredients are. So it helps with um, portfolio management and innovation, but all of that adds up to, to um, supporting our corporate target achievement in that area. And we've got similar targets around water, land. So all of those corporate environmental targets, unless we understand what's happening at that product level, we can't make the right decisions. So absolutely, um, the LCA is supporting. And, and of course, we actually have a corporate target around LCAs as well. So we set ourselves the challenge to have 100 yeah. uh, cradle to grade life cycle assessments by the end of the decade. Um, and so obviously, all of this work is really helping us progress towards that target. And we hope to to you know have many more studies available than that. Um, yeah. But really, we set ourselves, you know, we set ourselves the target to get all of this in place that we've been talking about for the last half an hour, all of these processes, the tool, the the engagement around the business, um, because we knew that it was going to add so much value across all of our um, sustainability efforts. Yeah. Uh, Becky, have you got anything to say on that one? Yeah, I guess just, you know, I think when we set the target at corporate level you know three four years ago for 100 to be done by the end of the decade in in all honesty i can say oh that that that's great but actually how is that going to drive change around what we do and how we do it and i think you know three years on the tools now developed the you know the capabilities there we're starting to build experience um around using it and knowledge around using it and and all of a sudden you can you can see the pull from the business of you know well can we do this product or how about this product you know how about this application in this region can we start to model this can we work with customers on that um and so i think you know without that core capability these questions from customers i mean i don't even think we would be aware that the customers would be asking these questions because we wouldn't have started that engagement with them around we have built this capability and we have this data and can we help to to work with you on it so i think it only has to be a you know as antonio says it's that core part of of what we're doing without it everything else becomes guesswork and and it's really hard to onboard people with you know best intentioned guesses as to what we think this actually allows people to yeah, um, yeah. be really quite science driven and, and innovation driven and and thinking about you know this is the reality of of some of those decisions yeah definitely and that 100 lca is considering the level of detail that's a very ambitious target do we do you reckon that's genuinely achievable in that time frame quite a challenge yeah i um yeah certainly you know from a cradle to gate perspective we'll have a lot more than 100 by the end of the decade because we're planning on on automating taking our methodology and the tool and doing some automation to speed that process up um oh. the cradle to grave yes um you know that is then we have to take those cradle to get studies and model that downstream application that is more complicated and involves you know really working closely with our customers to understand what's happening downstream um but you know once we've modelled our key applications, we can probably apply more than one product to sort of a shampoo application, for example. So yeah. um, there will be some streamlining there that we can possibly do. But um, but yeah, no, we think it's you know we're, we're we're confident that we'll be able to achieve the target and and much more than that from a cradle to gate perspective, which is what our customers are really asking for. They want to understand the impacts up to the point that the ingredient leaves Croda's facilities um and then of course they'll conduct their own studies so we want to work with them as closely as possible on that downstream bit um but you know our, our key priority is meeting their needs for those grade to gate studies um through automation in the next 12 to 18 months to really speed that up as well yeah but just uh, to pick up then on a bit of um uh, lingo i should say could you quickly explain to us the difference between cradle to grave and cradle to gate please yeah okay sorry yeah so cradle to gate so um everything from sourcing our raw materials through our manufacturing processes to to the point that the the ingredient leaves crota's site whereas cradle to grave looks at the full life cycle of the ingredient so once it gets you know includes getting to our customers being included in our customers formulation being used and then what happens 
you know, does it biodegrade or is it recycled? So the entire life cycle is included in that study. So it makes it a lot more complicated to to complete. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, do we have any examples of positive feedback from customers yet or is it too early to say? Uh, a bit of both, I think. So definitely the data that um, Antonia has been sharing with customers um certainly the feedback i've had from them has been incredibly positive of the um i think that that ease of understanding the way in which we're able to present the data to 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 be as you know as we were talking before kind of finding that niche between top level and too detailed but, but so that that's definitely been been positive um and and yes lots of um requests for follow up conversations follow-up actions around um can can we look into this further around their specific formulation which you know is is ultimately where we're where where we want to see this used i mean i think you know we 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 are now very quickly going from trying to push this to the businesses to suddenly having to you know limit the availability of resource because we're going to be inundated with requests yeah. and we're going to need to prioritize how to do this and and you know that's a wonderful problem to have i think in in the development of this tool yeah yeah definitely all right well and, last i'm oh, sorry go on. oh no I, I would say especially when our ingredients have uh, an impact into the performance of the end product um it, that's really where there's a lot of um, interest from the customers because um, ultimately we have the information associated with that performance that they could never um, get on their own. So it's um, kind of sharing this data in the, in the context of an LCA really opens up more discussions around, okay, how can we improve the formulation on one side, but then also how can we use all this information to improve the consumer behavior? If there's things that simply from, uh, because the consumer is not educated, they're not maximizing the use of our product. How can we use this data in an engaging way to drive measurable changes in day-to-day -day lives and basically show to everyone that you don't need to have a radical lifestyle change to lead a sustainable life. It's a very positive message. <laughs> we go on to the, the last question then, which I'm going to address to you, um, Sarah. What ultimately are Crota's ambitions for LCA in the future? I think it really it's to make sure it is embedded in those decisions that we make going forward. So um, being able, as Becky said, to understand that environmental impact before we do something, those what if scenarios, and that's particularly important from an innovation point of view, as we look to go even further and create completely new technologies that haven't been established before, we need to be able to do that simulation to understand if it's the right decision. Um, and that's something that we have been very much looking at within research and development. So we've been developing predictive footprinting um, and trying to get that better established within the R&D community. Um, but I think it can go beyond that to, to all decisions that we make um, from a business point of view to looking at changing plants um, and, and big capex projects um, to the raw materials that we buy as well, um, because it gives us such amazing information um, that we wouldn't have through other means. Yeah. I am um, um, so just to add, add on to that as well, Sarah, I agree with everything you've said. And that. I also think the other thing for us to think about in the future as well is to start thinking beyond environmental impacts to social impacts and how we can use life cycle assessment to understand um, social impacts of our ingredients as well. Yeah. Uh, Sridhar, do you have a, a view on whether you see the future of LCA at Crota? So like the as as our position is very typical in the business, having this engagement with uh, customers and having collaborations to work more closely with what is the downstream of this product, this will be more key focus for us to have this engagement on like a day to day uh, activities and it will be help us to also improve like uh, how the upstream effects are having on the downstream. So bringing this narrative on the whole life cycle will be more and more for us in the future uh, going forward. Great, thank you. So yeah, well, I think I think we'll, we'll call that a day. Thank you very much um, for your time. That was very helpful. It's good to have a, quite a range of expertise represented as well. We all seem to understand it from slightly different perspectives. So um, this will be the first of several new podcasts on the uh, Beyond Boundaries campaign, but I really appreciate your time today and um, hope to speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>